This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. It is noon on Thursday, folks. Ted Rolston down here in the Honolulu studios of Think Tech Hawaii overlooking downtown and uh, on our show, Where the Drone Leads, where we have typically brought you updates that apply to Hawaii and the world of drones, the emerging technology, the regulations and all that heavy stuff. Today we have a, the great pleasure of an incredible team on our show that's dealing with the end user aspects of drones and more than drones, but a really interesting bunch of people, three guys here who are operating under the various hats. One hat is uh, Mind Hawaii. We'll hear more about that, but we have Dr. Russell Wu. Russ, thanks for coming on board. Thank you. Chris Wong. Nice uh, thanks for coming on board. Yeah, you are at uh, Kapilani Medical Center yes. and at UH and many other things. You are up and coming at yes. UH Medical School <laughs> and Freddie Wheeler, who nice is a you. grad student at, uh, at UH and an uh, entrepreneur and, and great connector of people and ideas. You're putting together engineering solutions to medical problems is what you're thinking about right now, Freddie. Yes, and yes. That's a fantastic way to think about how engineering has that higher level of value, not just doing things for engineering's sake, but for medical. That's, that's pretty incredible. And drones fit in that picture somewhere. We have to mention drones on this show because it's <laughs> about drones. We've done that, now we can talk about whatever we want. So Freddie, talk, talk, to, talk to us about uh, Mind Hawaii and how that's all coming together. So uh, Mind Hawaii is a uh, biomedical innovation competition that we're trying to start at UH Manoa. Um, a biomedical it, competition? Yes. Annual uh, basis, something like that? Yeah. We're, okay. This is going to be our first year. We're just starting it now. Um, it's going to start sometime in uh, September. Actually, our first kickoff will be tomorrow. will be the first official tomorrow. event. Tomorrow? Yeah. Tomorrow will be the first kind of big official info session event uh, that we're going to have out Can here. Can the public come to that or people who want to be involved in that uh, show um, up? Yeah. We encourage people to come in. Uh, we ask that the competitors have at least one member from the University of Hawaii, either a med student or a student at UH Manoa. Uh, be part of the team, but if other people from outside the community want to help out in any way, shape, or form, uh, we're more than happy to where, accept what, this. What website should people turn to, and where should people show up at what time to be part of this tomorrow? Uh, our first event will be at UH Manoa tomorrow at 6 p.m. at the iLab. Uh, it's Building 37. It's right by the Student Center. Um, and for more information, they can go to www.mindhawaii.com. And we're going to see that on screen here after a bit, I believe, <laughs> www.mindhawaii.com. Yes. Fantastic. I interrupted your flow, I'm sorry. No. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, this kind of was a uh, birth from a course that's offered at UH Manoa, which was a biomedical design uh, class. And it was run through uh, Dr. Wu and also through a professor of mechanical engineering at UH Manoa, uh, Dr. Miller. And in it was just a semester course on how to take a medical need from an idea to something that the doctors and patients can use uh, right away. Which, in this case, implicitly, the doctors and the people involved aren't able to fix the problem themselves. They're going to turn to you and, and other people who might apply different materials, different uh, approaches, different software and such, and come up with a, maybe a different way to look at the problem. Yeah. Uh, the. Um, Doctors have these pain points, right? They, they deal with the patients and, and medical procedures every day, so they understand the things that uh, plague them. But they don't necessarily have the technical knowledge to engineer a solution. So Mind Hawaii is trying to bring these two groups that don't normally interact together uh, and then hopefully have some really wonderful products that come out of And that's the key it. point, bringing people who don't normally interact together into a common arena where the problem and the solution approach can be blended and maybe a better idea shows up. Yes. Exactly. That's like cutting across all disciplinary boundaries, too. There's no place you can have that at, at, a, at a conventional university. You've got departments that have, that have uh, uh, Nobel Prizes awarded in English and in, in math and science, but no, no place for the award uh, prizes in the problem-solving domain. You're going to create that. Yeah, we, we are going to create that. That's great. The three of you guys. Yes. Okay. So, um, I think Chris has an interesting perspective being from the medical side as well. Right. Um, yeah, so from the medical side, you know, we typically, you know, as medical students, as physicians, you're always in the hospital. You're always hands-on with the patients, but, and so you always come across these various problems day-to-day. -day. Oh, I wish that laparoscope didn't, you know, fog up all the time, or uh, if you want to look at more global problems, um, uh, specifically, now that you mentioned drones on the show. Twice um, now, that's twice? all right. Twice? Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. uh, there's a company, actually, that's using drones to deliver um, vac uh, vaccinations to very rural uh, third world countries. 
Um, so they're doing using, I think, both uh, prop and also um, the, the planes. Mm -hmm. uh, they load up the vaccinations, they fly them out uh, to these very, very remote villages. Um, and it's combining uh, that knowledge of the problem, the problem that uh, vaccinations don't last very long, it's, they got to be chilled, they need to be under these certain climates, it's very hard to get them there by car. Um, and it's, so it's understanding that problem, but also from like uh, Freddie's point, where uh, on the engineering side, they know the, they have the technical skills. They actually know how to use CAD machines. They also know how to use uh, CNC machines and things ah, like that. And that's interesting. That stuff's coming up so fast and is so capable mm -hmm. that it might escape the attention of folks working detailed mm -hmm. as they are every day in the medical profession. Right. You might yeah. not see these capabilities emerging on that side of the equation. Mm -hmm. And they, they spend years, you know, training with these machines and, and really understanding how they work and what their capabilities are. And, you know, that's not something we really see at all um, when you're in the medical field. And, and then you're seeing it this from a, from a senior position in the medical field. What do you think? Well, I think this is very exciting. I, I've been, as mentioned um, by Freddie and, and Chris, I've been co-teaching with uh, Dr. Miller at the university a course on, on design aimed at solving problems that the physicians bring me, bring our team. Um, and one of the things we realize, and I feel it myself as a practicing doctor, is that when, when I have a problem, you tend to think of things, if I just change it a little, maybe it'll be better. But when you bring it to the students, they open their minds. And they're not just making a small iteration on the current solution. They're thinking of all different, sometimes seemingly wild and crazy ways to solve the problem. But that really thinking out of the box and, and bringing different perspectives I think lead to very innovative and potentially groundbreaking solutions. And what um, you're providing is a framework for how that might happen. That's what which we're trying to do. doesn't really yes. exist in most of our operational domains, does it? Uh, they just think of the power company, think of uh, the insurance companies, think of medical profession. There's just no way that problems can be articulated and brought forward to some aggressive and interested bunch that wants to go study them. So once again, you're creating that. This is, yeah. uh, I will say that on the engineering side, uh, there has been some teams at UH doing using drones and search and rescue and some other applications, but I don't think we've seen it extend all the way to the medical domain, as you're suggesting here with uh, mm -hmm. prescription delivery. Yeah. But uh, you know, we had some discussions with the uh, at the legislature with the aerospace caucus uh, last um, last session, and there was discussion about the remote hospitals like Lanai on mm -hmm. Lanai taking medical samples and have to get those to some lab that can evaluate them before they expire. And there's only, only four airplanes a day to, to Lanai. Right. So even in, in Hawaii, we have that, that need to get mm -hmm. rapid service of lightweight uh, but frangible and, and fragile uh, uh, substances. So again, drones play in that game as well. Yeah. So right here in Hawaii, we have that. Not just third world countries, but uh, <laughs> right here in Hawaii. Yeah. So people, if they want to join this, uh, this competition, they need to form a team. They, do they have to come with a problem already in mind? Or is the purpose of the interaction to Put the problem owners together with the solution generators. Um, it both. Um, if if someone has an idea that they really feel passionate about and they want to get a team together, um, and all they're missing are the, the people, they can come and try to form a team. Um, that's what the first couple of weeks are going to be. These these next couple of weeks, we'll have events for the participants to network together, uh, to see who has similar interests or and different skill sets. Most importantly, what we're trying to build are multidisciplinary teams. So a team, an ideal team, a team that we think would have the highest level of success and, and put out a, a good product um, for Hawaii's medical needs is a team that has a doctor or a med student, a team that has an engineer, a team who has a business uh, major, or even a law, law school student. You know, if the, they all come together, they understand, they each have their own wheelhouse, right? Um, the doctor understands the medical side, the engineer understands the technology the most, um, the business, uh, the business student knows how to market and knows how the finances work. And the law student would understand regula regulations and, and, and things like that, patent law, right? So ideally, they all come together and they have a very robust product that's, that's commercial wool that has impact in our community right away. This is so important to the kids coming out of school because uh, at least when I came from an engineering school in the traditional discipline of 50 years ago, the earth had just crusted over when I was in school before you guys. And uh, we were so you know, channeled in, in math and certain engineering disciplines and such. And when you came out of school, you really didn't know what handle to grab to go solve a problem. And uh, I think the world needs problem solvers these days. I know that the company I came from, my last aerospace job, uh, 
the company now has a large facility in St. Louis where it takes graduates and runs them through six months of how to solve a problem. Even though they're graduate engineers, they still need to be taught how to solve a problem. And you guys are providing that at, at what level now? What level can participate? Undergraduates? Uh, yeah, so we're opening it up, I think, to everybody at the University of Hawaii, um, looking for people, in, in, as far as medical school uh, goes, for anyone who's a resident um, can also participate. Um, I think we're opening it up to wow. PhD candidates as well. Um, we actually, at our last meeting, our little information session, a few um, uh, PhD researchers um, were pitching their, their ideas and how their research could be transitioned into, um, away from, I guess, like, uh, uh, using them in like bovine models to transitioning that into um, a useful human product. Um, so it's, it's, it's really open and I think that's the kind of the beauty of it. Is anyone who has got an idea at the University of Hawaii, um, this is the place to come. This is the place to grow that idea, meet people that you'll never probably meet <laughs> outside of this program true. unless you're you know, walking into the different departments. But um, yeah, also, that, yeah. also I think it's a good um, like learning skills. So we're, we're opening it up to undergraduates, um, freshmen all the way up to, you know, like, like we were saying, PhD level uh, students. Um, and if, if you are an undergrad or, you know, we don't want to turn them away. Um, Absolutely. May, right. Uh, and it, I think it's a good way for them to get a taste of what real engineering, real problem solving is like once you graduate. You learn a valuable skill set that you can keep using throughout your uh, collegiate career. And I think that's, that's as a benefit of this. And to add to that, um, one of the benefits that we see of this program is not only is it teaching them all these skills, it's also giving them the oppor opportunity to network with individuals from the community. Right? So um, we're having uh, mentors and, and things like that from various disciplines, so whether they be engineering mentors, whether they're um, uh, medical mentors, uh, basically getting, giving these, uh, these participants the opportunity to meet these people, uh, to work with them, to talk with them, um, and then maybe even down the line, even uh, once they graduate, even work at, work with them in the in the community. So our job as you know elder statesmen in this domain is just to get out of their way, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Talk them, help right? us, exactly. help us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. That, that is so interesting. Mm -hmm. So once again, this is, I, I've been repeated a lot because it's such a novel idea, and I'm sure that people watching and watching the tubes that go beyond this will uh, be struggling also to understand where how to how to get involved because it's such a novel idea. It's such a broad idea. It has so many uh, flexibilities in it. It's, uh, there's many entry points and many outcomes. Uh, it's not an easily definable uh, uh, function you've created here. But once again, you're generating the ability for, in the medical world, for problems to become known and, and not hidden mm -hmm. and brought forth. And folks who can perhaps deal with those problems in whatever domain that may be, materials, uh, software, big data, whatever it might be, be seeing how they might apply something against that problem. In a comp competitive environment with an annual cycle, is it going to be an annual repeated competition? Yeah, we're, we're trying to, uh, we're, we're having our start date in September, and then um, we're shooting for a mid-April uh, competition kind of big okay. event at the end where the teams can... It's almost a school year, isn't it? It's right, right. It's yeah. tied to the, yeah. the, the yeah, school it's tied, calendar? It's, okay. it's pretty much tied to the school calendar. We're giving students time for finals and things for each semester so they don't have to worry about it impacting their schoolwork. But um, but really, it's we're trying to shoot for a mid-April event where the teams can then present their products um, to the public. It's open to the public. We're hoping to, to get that a big enough space for that. Um, and they can pitch, and the judges will be members of the medical community, um, the investment community, uh, and then hopefully that generates some ideas and further furthers those projects along. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take our first break here, and then when we come back, let's talk about how somebody, say me, would come up with an idea and enter this competition. What do I, what I need to think about, what kind of a team I need, and how I also do my day job while, while paying attention to this much more exciting thing that you're creating <laughs> after our break. For every game day, 
Assign a designated driver. Aloha, I'm Tim Apachaw, host for Moving Hawaii Forward, a show dedicated to transportation issues and traffic. We identify those areas where we do have problems in the state, but also the show's dedicated to trying to find solutions, not just detail our problems. So join me every other Tuesday on Moving Hawaii Forward. I'm Tim Apicella. Thank you. Aloha, I'm Richard Concepcion, the host of Hispanic Hawaii. You can watch my show every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. We will bring you entertainment, educational, and also we tell you what is happening right here within our community. Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. We are back, folks. Second half of our show, where the drone leads. Uh, Think Tech Hawaii downtown Honolulu with a fantastic bunch of guests from the Mind Hawaii uh, competition organization, leading off uh, at, at a whole new concept of competition for the benefit of society. To put it in a in a in a, in a big way, these three guys here: Dr. Russell Wu, Chris Wong. And Freddie Wheeler, uh, 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 and UH. How about that? Yeah. And not only the UH leadership function, right? Right on. So uh, here we go. So uh, we were talking about, uh, before the break, about this novel idea, which is so big it's hard to even wrap your arms around. And you got some slides that I think that the guys have they can yeah, talk we have, a little bit um, about this. We have a couple of previous projects. So that's, that's our nice logo. Um, okay. And I mean, even the logo itself is kind of trying, we're trying to showcase oh, yeah. what we're brain, trying to do, right? Brain and, uh, but left yeah. brain, right brain, the kind of more organic medical side versus yeah. the, the, the technology side, and we're trying to bring them together uh, into the competition, so. Okay, so the, I guess the, uh, we wanted to talk about this. This is um, uh, kind of examples of what MIND is trying to foster, some kind of ideas, okay. very similar. So this is a hospital, uh, it's Mulago Hospital, in Uganda. If you look very closely, this is actually their neonatal unit. Um, and uh, if you look very closely, there's two incubators sitting in the back, but there's no babies in them. They're actually being used as storage. So uh, one of the big problems with uh, the kind of donating uh, high, these um, high-tech pieces of equipment to third world countries is they don't have the infrastructure to both repair, um, or not only they don't have the infrastructure to repair, they don't have the funding to repair it. So um, they're actually being used as, as, I guess, storage. So a company, um, called uh, Neo Nurture kind of came up with a really interesting solution for this. If we can get to the, yeah. So, uh, so this is a company called Neo Nurture. They made a, a baby incubator uh, out of car parts. So the warmth is provided by the headlights, it's powered by the car's battery, and, and there's a whole host of other functions. But the, the key part of this is that um, third world countries like Uganda have the infrastructure and parts on hand to repair these when they break down. So these very expensive, uh, technologically advanced units, when they get sent there, the moment they break down, they immediately become useless. So from an engineering perspective, the uh, reliability and the supply chain that, that allows the thing to keep in service would be a factor that would be recognized. In fact, then that almost implies in the competition you're going to run, that sort of thing, sustainability, reliability, would have to be a voted factor in, in achieving success. Definitely. I think... Um when we thought of the competition, we all met as a group, and, and we, we have three areas right now that the prizes are going to be focused on. One is high impact, and that is your broad, uh, what's the large market, what's going to hit the most patients, but also um, special needs children and elder care in Hawaii. So we're going to be looking, we're going to encourage the students to be looking at problems that are specific to Hawaii, and a special focus on cost-effective and sustainable solutions for these problems. In our and, environment. In our environment. Which means a yeah. salt, air, rich environment where electronics uh, don't survive all that long and even some metallics have a tough time. So that's, that's a very interesting uh, way to get the students to realize it's not just the duct tape version that, that is going to be <laughs> successful. It's going to be mm -hmm. that to start with perhaps, but it's got to be sustainable and durable right. and tolerate the environment with a broad plateau solution as opposed to a peak solution. Engineering okay. talk. Yeah. But there's a I mean, there's a wide range of like complexity, right? So the baby incubator, while the solution seems very ingenious, like, why don't I just use car parts to, to solve this problem? Uh, for certain students, right, especially for undergrads, that might seem very um, ambitious for them, right? So I think we have another project, a uh, couple of slides. Another slide. With like syringes. Right. And we let Chris we talk about syringes. the... Okay. Uh, yeah, so um, uh, this is kind of another problem that's out there. So uh, again, it's a third world country. Um, kind of uh, issue um, in areas that are highly uh, where uh, HIV and AIDS is, is very um, prevalent. You also notice that uh, I guess um, literacy rates are also very low. So 
for example, in these countries, you know, I can tell you, draw five milliliters of uh, the medication and give it to your child every day. Problem is, one, they probably don't know what a milliliter is, and probably they may not even know what five is. Um, so uh, the big problem is, if you overdose or underdose, you can start to create HIV resistant, um, mm -hmm. or uh, I guess me medication resistant HIV, um, which uh, down the road is not very good for these patients. Um, so an another co uh, company that came out of a program very similar to ours out of Rice University um, created a very simple and ingenious solution to this problem. So if we can. Are we going to see that on the next yeah, slide? Yeah, next slide, next please. Slide? Yeah. Okay. So um, this came out of a similar competition from Rice University, um, and they're called Dose Right Syringe Clips. And these are color coded plastic clips that you put onto your syringe, and then it stops you um, past a certain part, right? That little black stopper mm -hmm. gets mm -hmm. stopped by the clip. Um, and then all you have to do is put the right color into your syringe. All the colors, you got it. Right. If you have all the colors, or even just give them the correct color. The doctor, whoever is uh, giving out these, these clips, just gives them the one that they need, um, clips it on, and then that's it. Uh, you get a per perfect dose every time. So this is a rather, you know, the problem itself seemed daunting, right? How do we ensure that we get the right dosage out in, in these third world countries that require medication? But the, the solution itself is really ingenious. It's, it's plastic in a mold. And, and the solutions don't have to be something out of Merck Incorporated or something like that. It's no, a really no, complex no. system with a computer and some software and a download. It's, it's a, it could be very simple. Yeah, that, that program run out of RICE is uh, very similar to ours. There's a bunch of universities across the country that have similar things. And <coughs> that was a student team that came up with that idea, ran with it, and now has a company out of it. So, You know, just seeing that, just a, you mentioned local, uh, it's something that I just came to mind as I was seeing that picture. Years ago, some elementary school student around here won a contest for clips like that you put on your slipper when you go to somebody's house because all the slippers are outside and <laughs> yours are all, they're all, all the same, right? All came from Long's. And yep. uh, you, your, own, your own clip, though, is customized to you. So there, there's a... <laughs> there I lost some, my slippers last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> there are some correlations here locally that would right. be, I think, uh, mm -hmm. intriguing. So, uh, so uh, once again, let's, let's say I had an idea. I had either a problem or I had an idea of a technology or a capability or something that would assist, like this. How, what would, how would you suggest to me in, in order tomorrow to come down and interact with this bunch? Right. Oh, well, we have... You're, we, I don't mean this bunch in a, <laughs> this, in a, like an uncontrolled sense with the Mind Hawaii competition. Um, well, if you're, if you're a student of UH uh, Medical School or, or just UH Manoa... If you're an employee of the Applied Research Lab, would that work also? <laughs> Um, then, okay, so we actually have a slide. I think it's like the last slide up. Oh, uh, it's like slide? how you can help. Okay. Yeah. So, how you, so, so Mind Hawaii is looking for support from the local community. We really want to make this uh, products for Hawaii, for Hawaii's needs. Because um, so many times, especially in academia, uh, research gets done and it's purely for the benefit of research, which has its own benefits to I've it. I've never heard know. that before. I can't yeah. believe that. <laughs> right. But, um, and that has its own benefits. But what we are trying to do is get real impact for real people here in Hawaii. So we want real, clearly identified problems that have a Hawaii association. Yes, that would be the idea. Although if you have problems that apply everywhere, not just, it doesn't have to be it's Hawaii specific. Better, right? yeah, 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 yeah. But um, don't feel like your problem is too small, like it only affects Hawaii, that, okay. then I shouldn't come out. So please, uh, if you have an idea, please come out. Um, if you're a student of UH Medical School or, or UH Manoa, um, please show up to our event tomorrow. Uh, it's, again, it's from 6 to 8 at the iLab, uh, Building 37, if you're looking at the map. Um, and then and just network with the rest of the participants. If you are an adult with a full-time job, um, what we'd really like is if you have a problem uh, or an idea that you want to see, be a, be a mentor, be a sponsor. So basically, just give us some background information, some brief kind of abstract type of, of deal about your problem, and then um, just be available, just, just promise to be available to mentor these students along in your problem. Because they'll come to you asking, hey, what, what do you want out of this? What is, what, is, what is your problem that you're facing? So we really want to bring that, that connection together. Okay, so we're talking about mentors, and we're talking with who are knowledgeable people. We're talking about a rich problem set. As far as the technology set or the solution elements, how is that being harvested and brought into the picture? In the last two minutes here, by the okay. way. Okay. Well, so it, it, uh, Mind Hawaii is not only just a competition. You know, I think uh, we, we kind of think of, it, think of it as a, um, I guess, like a mentorship program, where we're not only taking people um, 
from idea, we're not, we're not just matching people, we're also teaching them the skills that they need. So we're holding workshops uh, about two to three times a week mm -hmm. um, that teach you how to not only think about a problem, how to come up with a solution, how to uh, kind of research um, what's already out there, uh, but we're also teaching them how to actually work in the workshops, how to um, kind of use the, use the tools, how to This is a makerspace on steroids with structure. Yeah, yes. it's, uh, it's actually, it's actually <laughs> being run okay. out of <laughs> All right, I got the yeah. picture now. This is, this is, this, and, 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 and mentored, and, right. and that's yeah. the key yes. part, mentored and with some controls so that it's not going to go out of control. Right. Yeah. And this is great. So, uh, I, again, it took half an hour, and we finally got to that point. I mean, yeah. this is a hard thing to understand. Mm -hmm. I really applaud you guys for taking this on and having the courage to, uh, to push it forward. And I hope it's being advertised broadly. I hope this will help get more yeah. folks involved in Thank you for having us on. and on the technology side and on the problem side. The problem side is the hardest thing to write down. How do you define a problem? Generally, problems, we live with them all day long. We don't bother writing them down. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, Dr. Richard Wu, Chris Wong, and Freddie Wheeler, from all from UH and all with a brilliant idea here, Mind Hawaii, tomorrow at 6 o'clock at Building 37 at UH. Come on down and everybody start contributing to the problem space and contributing to the solution space. Medical orientation, right? Yep. Got it. Thanks so much for coming on. We'll keep tabs on this thing from time to time as the year goes by here, okay? Yeah. No Thanks, problem. guys, Thank very much for coming here. on now. Thanks for having us. Okay.